Hello and welcome to President's Cortes. Today it is a wonderful day because I have in my midst um, one great person that I think you will learn so much from. Um, when I asked for the interview, I thought of interviewing one person. God deny! <laughs> we interview a whole family of one person. So it's quite an honor for me to introduce um, my psychologist of the day, um, Mrs. Success Chauke. How are you, ma'am? I'm awesome, and, and thank you so much for, for having me in your show, oh. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to tell you a bit of background story, um, myself and Success, we stayed literally 30 just seconds away. Just a few around. blocks away. Yeah, when yeah. a block is too few, I think three, four, five houses away from each other. So mm -hmm. when I was getting to the high school we went to, she was going out, and I remember the day where it was uh, awards day. It was literally, she was collecting, it was, well, uh, you were calling success after success, success after success. And I knew from that moment that, because we come from the same space in the school, is at a different location. Mm. I had to uphold that reputation. Yeah, and, and you did, right? <laughs> eh? To a whole different level. Eh? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am honored. At least I didn't disappoint you now. No, you didn't disappoint. <laughs> yeah, you took the bar very, very, very high. The, yes. No, so, yeah. So, basically, that's, that's just the bar. She did psychology at the uh, Midland Graduate uh, Institute. And, then, and I think that's one of the questions I want to start with. Um, mm. Because a lot of people will think for you to be the best in what you do, you must go to a vet university mm. or UJ. Um, but I want her to start there to kind of give us a bit of a background story of her education. So that we inspire also that you shouldn't feel bad because you're not at a vet. Yes. There are yes. many other institutions that are equally as good. Yeah. 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 So basically, with, with my story, how I landed, and I actually a very interesting story. Yeah. So um, come, I think it was around June time, that's when we were busy with the applications. Sure. So I applied at the University of Pretoria as well as UJ. Yeah. Um, my first choice at UJ was LLB Ooh, yeah. and second choice was psychology. Okay. So amazingly so, LLB for me was the first choice because my father wanted to have a lawyer ah. in the family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so sure. it was not something that I had thought through and mm. ever saw myself doing, but because of the pressure from the family, you know how parents can be yeah. so, <laughs> so <laughs> and then I'm like, I am like I I'm not gonna disappoint. Mm. I know that I can get accepted and then let me just go for it. Sure. So I applied at UJ, um, UP, I applied for, I think it was Bachelor of something that had to do with biochemistry and whatnot. Yeah. I did not know what I was doing, I was just <laughs> doing yeah, yeah. applications. Yeah. So um, I, I got the acceptance letter sure. from the University of Johannesburg to sure. study law yeah. and obviously I had to forfeit my mm. second choice. So come December, Come January, I'm preparing myself to go to the University of Johannesburg. Yeah, some call it the University of Jesus. <laughs> of joy. Oh, the University of Joy of Jesus. <laughs> sure. so I'm preparing myself to go there. Most of my friends were going there, so wow. I knew that socially sure. it was not going to be awkward because mm. I'd be around people that I know. Sure. Yeah, then I sat down, mm. then I just had a reality check. Sure with myself and with one of my mentors it's, it's mm. very much important yeah. that we get mentors at a, at, a, at a young age so i sat down with him mm. and then i told him sure. what i couldn't tell my parents mm. Uri, you know what mina i i i, I don't want to do law sure. I, i'm not gonna make a good lawyer sure. i'm not gonna love it mm. and we had to break it down to my parents. My father was very angry. I ah, will never forget that imagine. day. He was so angry. Because in his head, I'm sure he has 
He's seeing this lawyer, this your honor yes. daughter over here. Is that my whole life been, already planned, planned for you? Yeah. Sense, yeah. So when I broke the news to him and told him that, listen, I can go to UJ, I can work hard and be a lawyer, sure. but I, I don't love it. Sure. I I actually love psychology. Mm -hmm. Then I, I'm not gonna survive. I told him that I'm not gonna survive, sure. and as difficult as it was, you know, he had to understand, and sure. my mother was very supportive. Uh, so last minute things, I passed very well. Sure. Um, then <clears throat> ahead of MGI, mm -hmm. I think they once came to our school, yeah. and then by the little one and the little career guidance and whatnot. Then sure. I remembered. Then I went to MGI, but still. When yeah, the first choice is still LLB. <laughs> so I remember yeah. the beautiful thing with MGI is that you get the practical experience sure. of, of everything. So I remember I was sitting down and then they brought in a lawyer actually. Mm. And then the lady sat down with me sure. and then she explained to me. You know, I remember her telling me about eggs and whatnot and all. <laughs> And from there, I was like, nah, this is not for me. This is easy. not for me. I, I love relating to people. Uh, I love connecting to people. I love sure. speaking to people. And I love making a difference in people's life. Sure. And I know that through law, I can do that. Sure. But my approach is more involved. Mm. So that's why then I opted for Bachelor of Psychology. Sure. And I got in and I, I don't regret. I'm not even regretting sure. even in this moment. I love it. I'm growing in it. Growing sure. in it. Mm. Yeah. And, and that's why I think even my heart when I was thinking about this topic, um, my heart just said, you know a person who's super capable of this topic and was just staying just just around the corner. Just around the corner. And, yeah, Bob's a yes. over here. And, uh, yeah. And then you just said something quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Um that when they wanted you to go to LLB, you felt it is not for me. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately on campus you find a lot of students are either in the wrong course or they may be in whatever course mm -hmm. and they find difficulty and they fall into a space of anxiety and a space yes, of depression, depression. because mm. of can be parents said do this or it can be marks because mm. they look good do this. Mm. I want to first understand what is the how does a normal person in a happy normal state psychologically look like from a psychological point of view? How does that person look yeah. like? Yeah. And and you know the the look like sure. is it's almost a it's it's a difficult one. Okay. Because with, with mental and psychological disorders, sure. Sure. I can't just look at you and yeah. say you have depression. Oh. And, and it differs a lot to the physical disorders that we see, you know. Hemotoanali sure. flu, you are able to tell Rocky find this person um, is mm. naughty and things like sure. that. So it's easy to tell physiologically sure. when there is something wrong with a person. Okay. But when it comes to issues of the mind, issues of our emotions, sure. the psychological part, it is quite often difficult mm. to tell. Sure. That is why at some point we miss it. Mm. And then mm. when, when they say that this person committed suicide and and then Kimura Makalan and be like, but how come he, mm. he was always smiling, she was always mm. this and that. But the the moment that we we sit down and then try to trace back a few days that we spent with the person, mm. that's when we actually begin to realize, you know, Mara, you know what? Um, I remember once I had a friend of mine um, who committed suicide. Mm. It was a shock for me. It was a triple shock for me because sure. I am in the psychology yeah. field. I should have seen this sure. from, from the onset. And it was a surprise mm. for me. But when I sat down and, and started to recall the few days mm. that I had with, with the person, I realized that, okay, this person was a smoker. Mm. But their smoking had gone just way beyond it went from so, a single um i don't know if it's like a cigarette single, single, yeah, yeah whatever they call it sure. to almost a box 
you know, and then to smoking marijuana and then mixing other things. That I think the last time that I saw mm. the person, um, she was sniffing cocaine or what, but she was busy, you know, but with, with, with yeah, with her nose and things like that. And then I, I remember the conversations that we had. You know, um, the person always spoke about God and being with God. Sure. Mind you, the person was not a Christian. Ah. You know, and it's like, you know, I should come to church with you. Um, you know, I want to be with God and, and speaking about how tired they are, but sort of, sort of like using God as a shield of that thing. And that's when I realized that, oh, snap, the signs were there. Sure. But I... I missed it. Mm -hmm. So a normal psychological state of, of being to to realize it. Number one, it requires um, us as people yeah. to be to be aware and very much aware of our surroundings. Sure. To be aware of ourselves mm -hmm. and be aware of the people that are next to us. Because uh -huh. in as much as um, I cannot be able to turn over to okay, you know what? Actually, I think. Um, Matome is, is depressed or whatnot. The signs are always there, you know. Um, it can go from, um, you know, that the person was someone who used to wake up early in the morning, sure. but all of a sudden they sleep half a day. Mm -hmm. um, you look at their eating patterns, there's a change mm -hmm. in their eating patterns. The one that is most common it, it is substance use because they, um, basically when people feel more anxious or depressed, yeah. they run to substances because they want to numb mm -hmm. the feeling. So the person, you know that this person drinks, but all of a sudden, the, the way that they drink, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And then their speech will always give them away. Sure. You know, the person will either keep on telling about, keep, keep on saying things like how much they don't want to be in this world. Mm -hmm. And some people might try to hide it, like a friend of mine, it was like, you know, I just want to be with God and whatnot. And me in my head, I'm thinking, oh, this person, you know, wants to have that relationship with God. Mm -hmm. But actually for them, it mm -hmm. meant I, I don't want to be in this world mm -hmm. anymore. So... Um, distinguishing from an abnormal to a normal, it is always changes in lifestyle. Sure. If there is a major change in somebody's lifestyle, that should be that red flag that says, you know what, something is away. Mm -hmm. Let me either try to pay more attention to the person mm -hmm. or try to speak to the person and find out what's happening. Sure. So when the changes, it's not uh, progressive type of changes, as in yeah, I'm into athletics now. I mean, so it's, it's more withdrawal type of change. Yes, withdrawal, with sure. depression. Mm -hmm. They will either withdraw, and then it, it, it is gradual. It, it, it starts at something, as something small, sure. and then it will, go, it will grow and grow and grow. But things like withdrawing from activities that they normally enjoy. Yeah. However, there have been cases sure. where um, instead of withdrawing, the person just always wants to spend time mm -hmm. at the soccer field okay yeah. like dude we know that you are into soccer but don't you think you are overdoing it now mm -hmm. so that could mean that maybe the problem that the person is faced with sure. you know the trigger at, at somebody in the house and the person wants to to get away and then mm -hmm. they will use whatever that they find to, sure. to try and use it as a coping mechanism okay. Because what you're saying is, because I sent you the link to the interview I did with a young lady, Rufilia Mukherjee, mm -hmm. and what you're saying literally mirrors what, what she, she wants to Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. she said um, she withdrew from public spaces mm -hmm. basically and went into a place of seclusion. Mm -hmm. And that's how she, mm -hmm. she, it became worse for her. And, and that is what depression does, because when, when we try to... I think I'm gonna move on to the second point. <laughs> Trying to understand depression from a sure. psychological point of view. Yeah. We understand it number one as a mood disorder. Okay. Okay. Yes, it's it's there's a sudden change in this person's mood and it is often um, accompanied by deep feelings of helplessness. Okay. So one of the reasons why a person will withdraw from a crowd, it's from within them. They feel this huge sense of, I, I, I can't receive help. Uh, 
Uh, anywhere and then that leads to a deep feeling of hopelessness sure. like there's no hope they'd rather be by themselves sure. they couldn't it, they don't feel they fit in certain circles that they used to feel anymore mm. as well as feelings of worthlessness sure. so basically a, a person who's depressed they battle mostly with the feelings that are within them mm. so something happened or um like for example i'm still studying LLB, I didn't want sure. to study LLB, mm. and then cause Charles, and then sure. all of a sudden, um, I'm feeling helpless, mm. I tried to use this method and whatnot, it's not working, I'm feeling hopeless, I don't see myself graduating, I don't see myself um, writing those um, board exams and things like that, hopelessness and worthlessness, sure. and then from those feelings, then it proceeds now to show physiologically. Okay. And then by the time where we <clears throat> see the physiological reactions, then it's, it, it means that the person is deep sure. now. Because the person, you know, other people might have a sudden weight loss. Like sure. All of a sudden, sudden weight loss. And this reminds me, um, back in the days, I think it was in the 1800s, um, mm -hmm. There's one of the fathers of psychology before sure. they became to understand depression. Sure. So the guy was a physician okay. and then he used to be presented with um, clients who were all of a sudden paralyzed, mm -hmm. all of a sudden um, numb and things like that. And then when he did his um, physiological examinations, there was literally nothing wrong with the person. Mm. Then, when now he started to move more to the emotional state and whatnot, that's where he realized that, okay, these people actually have some sort of conflict sure. um, that is happening emotionally or psychologically. And then as a result, they just stopped moving, they became mm. paralyzed. Mm. So these are some of the symptoms that we see. We don't know, this person sleeps like the whole day. Mm. You, you can't be a normal functioning person and sleep the whole day. Mm. Um, you don't eat the way that you used yeah. to do, or maybe you eat excessively. Sure. You know, there's a high loss of appetite. For some people, it goes to the extent of they've stopped taking care of themselves. Yeah, yeah. They don't bath, they don't... Yeah. Her personal hygiene it is no longer a concern. Oh. Then you are able to tell her mentally something is very wrong. But then, but then some do opposite, as you said. Some start eating a lot. Mm -hmm. um, comfort food, as, as they call yeah. it. Um, just to suppress, just to suppress the emotions. And then after eating a lot, and then they get fed. Okay. And then she looks herself at, at the mirror. And then mm -hmm. now she's fed. And it, it adds to what sure. already is there and now even it affects self-confidence self-awareness yes and body image yes, issues yes, and yes. then they can develop other psychologically related eating disorders sure so yeah depression is it's one of those things sure. that i believe you know our public health is not to pet mental health yes. uh, or on its own i think they should prioritize it more, 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 more. Sure. Because the stats are, are highlighting stats of suicide, sure. stats of, and now it's not even no longer a um, color. They used to say that men are yeah. prone yeah. to commit suicide. Yeah. Now it's children, young children. You can hear a child as young as seven years. Sure. They'll tell you that their child committed suicide. Sure. It's scary. Oh. Been saying that God me Yeah, no, it's 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 scary. It's it's very scary, and they do commit suicide to young adults and yeah. men, women. It doesn't matter. Depression doesn't choose for a ketora basadi failure because basadi they are more prone to be stressed. We do get men that are depressed, and with.